principle of separation of powers predisposes that the three arms of government, that's the executive, legislature, and the judiciary, perform their duties independently. Now, the Senate is asserting its independence regarding the amendments to the Electoral Act, which was signed by President Muhammadu Buhari on February the 25th, and not even a ruling by the Federal High Court in Abuja could stop the upper legislative chamber from deliberating on the issue. The Senate has now thrown out the request by President Buhari for an amendment of Section 84, subsection 12 of the Electoral Act, and which this provision pre prevents appointed political office holders from contesting for elections from party primary level without resigning. And the request was rejected after a debate for the second reading of the bill occurred on Wednesday. The senators kicked against it and voted no when it was put to voice votes by the Senate President, Senator Ahmed Lawan. Let's hear from them. Those in favor that this bill be now read a second time. Say aye. Those again say nay. No, I'm not putting the question again because I put it. I put the question. There was an I and there were nays. And I said the nays had it. Senate President the Ahmed Lawan, the leading of the session where voice votes uh, were cast and uh, the overall uh, voices uh, pandered no, uh, you know, and that uh, more or less, you know, brings an end to the, uh, well, the president's uh, amendment desire of the Electoral Act. Moji Jamio, how do you view uh, this, this occurrence? And yes, we are seeing three arms of government. Uh, the judiciary had initially had a say on this when the matter was put before it. You know, um, an order was delivered also by the same Justice Echo. The executive had already brought this bill forward. The legislature has now had its say. What does this all mean to you? I, I see that as uh, the beauty of uh, democracy. What actually um, uh, Section 84, uh, uh, Chapter 12 of uh, the Constitution says is that uh, uh, no political appointee at any level shall be a voting delegate or be voted for at uh, the convention of political parties or at the uh, at, um, i mean uh, or for the nomination of um, um the process of candidates and also it's talked about the issue i mean which you mentioned which is uh, that they should resign as uh, um, political appointees 30 days before, before the they election. can contest for an election. So, you know, there are two issues in one. And uh, the two issues have been a subject uh, of debate. And a lot of people have gone to court. Uh, a lot of aspirants and candidates have gone to court to challenge this. Now, there's a difference between standing for election and being appointed. And when you stand for election, it, you go through a rigorous process. And that's why governors uh, legislators can run for an election and still de de retain their position even when they lose. Uh, I mean, a clear example is that of Faleke. He was in the House of Reps when he went to um, uh, Kogi to um, contest as a, a deputy uh, governorship candidate. I wanted to become governor. He lost in the process for the two and came back to Reps. But in the case of political appointees, maybe like ministers and uh, maybe executive secretaries and other appoint appointment positions, not elective posts, they have to resign. And if they resign from such positions and they go to contest for election and they lose, it is not guaranteed that they can come back there. So the legislators, I mean, the, the, the senators are saying that we were elected, we campaigned, and we, I mean, that's why we have that uh, right of first refusal. That's why we have that advantage 
of being able to stand for an election, even while still occupying our position, and that political appointees don't have such powers. And now, it is actually the governors that are pushing. There has been a, a mild drama between, between governors and, and the lawmakers. Because lawmakers, I mean, the law, I mean, uh, in the political parties, the lawmakers, they also have their own aides, legislative aides, APAs, and, and what have you. They cannot vote or be voted for or nominate candidates during conventions. But the governors and probably the president, I mean, we have governors who have like 1,000 essays. So if the political appointees are allowed to vote at convention, it, it means that he has an advantage. That be an issue. He will have 1,000 of his aides, Plus including commissioners mm -hmm. and also, and statutory delegates yes. to vote mm -hmm. during elections. So that's why the governors lobbied the president to ensure that that clause, that clause is removed. expunged mm -hmm. from the constitution. But the lawmakers, I mean, they are battle ready. That's why they are even sponsoring one of them to become chairman um, uh, of, uh, of the party uh, of APC at uh, their oncoming uh, convention. So it's, 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 it's all about interest. It's all about interest. Let's hear from, from Mr. Dodd. So what, what's it uh, for you? Uh, and okay, <laughs> you, if I may further you know, add that you know, the, the judiciary um, earlier in the month or, or thereabout when the, this bill was presented before it seeking an order had said that no one, neither the president, the executive or uh, the lawmakers you know, have any rights to, to, to alter it. And we saw Senator Lawan going on. Oh, well, it, it, on it's, it. it's a settled matter that the judiciary has a right to debate and take decision on any matter before it. It's settled. Just like what we discussed about removing a governor, his deputy president or vice president mm -hmm. from power. It is settled. And the National Assembly is also saying they also have a right to deliberate on bills for the welfare of yes, all Nigerians. that's why it is settled. Mm -hmm. right. you don't, the court can't stop. It's, it it's, it's been uh, there over the years. There have been this controversy of don't debate this, don't debate that, but it's a settled matter. The, when, the, when the thing comes into force now, you can then go and try it out again in the court and say this decision was taken while this was subsisting. And see, let's see how the court will then rule. Because the legislature has a right to debate any issue and take a decision, whatever the judiciary feels. Because that is its own mandate. Mm. That's why we empower them as Nigerians to take that decision. What the legislature couldn't get initially mm. in pushing that governors, sh governors, the powers of governors should be whittled in terms of party primaries, convention, and all the rest. They have it now, even if it is not total. Because a governor, for instance, can promise all his appointees, resign, go for this. If we, when we finish, come back, I accept you back. There can be an understanding. But we shouldn't forget that this is politics in Nigeria. Right. Anything can happen in that process. Mm -hmm. People can be wooed away from the governors. They can lose the election. Anything can happen. So that is the beauty of this, that there is a reduction in the powers of the president and the governors to determine delegates to primaries and to conventions. Well, Mojid, uh, if you look at how the Senate is acting now vis-a-vis uh, -vis concerns that um, the Senate and the House are seeing themselves more like an appendage or a rubber stamp of, of the executive. With, with this now, does this give us uh, you know, hope that indeed the Senate, the lawmakers generally, are you know, asserting their independence? Well, how I wish I believe so. But then, like I said earlier, uh, this is a matter that concerns them and because we are actually approaching um, critical 
uh, primaries for the, the major political parties. And that's why it's actually the PDP that went to court to challenge uh, this clause uh, uh, that, that it should be expunged uh, from the um, uh, amended uh, electoral act. And, uh, uh, you know, but the governors lobbied the, uh, the, the president. But, you know, the president has nothing at stake. He's not running again. So he just sent it to the uh, Senate, uh, to the National Assembly. To, well, guys, if you want to consider this, you can do so. I mean, it's not as if the uh, President really has, anything, has to any, gain. anything to gain or lose. I mean, if it were issues that he has interest in, he knows how to do it in such a way that the, the Senate would uh, even still uh, approve it. But then, uh, let's give kudos to the uh, lawmakers. At least for once, I mean, they are trying to strike a balance and uh, detach uh, themselves from being an appendage of uh, the uh, executive arm of government. But, uh, I mean, in the recent past, especially this uh, 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 National Assembly, they have been supportive of the, quote-unquote, supportive of uh, the uh, regime of uh, uh, Buhari, unlike uh, what we had uh, in the first uh, term under under Saraki uh, led as uh, uh, said it, and uh, I mean it's been a very robust uh, deliberations, uh, especially on this electoral act, and for them to actually take the initiative to say no, or, I mean on, on this issue of uh, the political appointees and their designation and their participation in party primaries and nominations, I think uh, we should give them kudos. All right. What, what, what will be your parting shot on, on this issue, especially uh, with the, the desire is still, you know, uh, you know, for the greater good, uh, you know, for society, as all these um, constitutional exercises are brought before the lawmakers. Uh, indeed, even though there may be personal interest at play here, uh, where does this all lead, leave the society indeed? Well, it, it doesn't leave the, we the so-called masses any good. Because what we have seen, always will be the interests of the political players at play. That's what they do to us. Because if you ask me, like I've always said on this program, what I want will be a situation where we can return party politics to the era when your voice, my voice, will count. Now we don't have a say because my one naira will not mean anything to a political party. Some people are dictating their and they, they like they say who plays who, who pays the piper who will take the tune is the man who is paying. Who is so? What we want is for us to return to that era where political parties belong to the masses, where we are the ones who will decide who becomes the chairman. Now, APC is going to its convention. We are hearing that the chairman has been decided by the president. That isn't good for a political party. We are hearing they have zoned everything and then they have reached a consensus. Meaning that if I'm a member of APC, my voice doesn't count. I don't have a say in who becomes the chairman, in who becomes the candidate for any elective position. Some people would have sat down somewhere, taken a decision, and said this is the direction in which we are heading. The only time you are going to hear the voices of others, like it's happening now in um, governorship primaries in some states, mm -hmm. is when they disagree. It's when one person feels, I'm aggrieved. Mm -hmm. you hear but once they agree, All right. we are good to go. All right. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll wait and see and compare your predictions uh, eventually.